I'm Bottles. I'm Maury. And welcome back to Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Maybe the finale? Probably, I Most don't know. Ma there's a basement? Yeah, there's a basement. We've been down there before. That's where we found um, the tape recorder. Right, you're right. I forgot all about the basement because we just haven't been down there in so long. What were mm -hmm. we doing? We're questioning. Oh yeah, we're talking we're to Frank. Questioning in his room. Frank because he's a f fucking fuck. He's a fucking murderer. He has to make us do, go through all this fucking Walking. social gymnastics. All this to figure social... out that he has shit to tell us. Fuck this guy and his social distancing. Well, I can't talk about it in front of Mag. It's like, what, what if she has the virus that'll kill me? <laughs> And he even goes through the effort of making us knock. Instead of just leaving the door open. Yeah. Mr. Hyde? I wasn't expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am. Now talk. Of course. Please, come in. <laughs> Which one? Which one? So this is where Frank holds himself up. Oh, so we had to talk to Mags first and then him. Gotcha. Well, now we just know that Patrice hates us. No, don't take it. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't fucking trust you for a second. Save it for a real guest. I'm just here. I'm just here to hear what you have to say here. Here. <laughs> well, I intend to have a drink, so please join me. Or I guess we don't have a choice then. <laughs> Frank heads in the direction of the kitchen. Sydney from the can cafe kindly gave me some coffee not long ago. Would you care for some? Mm. Well, in that case... This won't take long. Please, wait here. He's gonna Hide. fucking knock us out. He's Hide. Hide. He's very intent on giving us a drink. Okay. Good for him. Looks like a family photo. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Frank places two cups of coffee on the table. Don't take that sip. I swear. It smells pretty good. It smells good. pretty good. It smells, it does pretty it's pretty good. good. Now that I think about it, you're the only person who's been here, in and here, and had a coffee with me. What about your family? Dead. <laughs> waste the shit. Fuck. <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> My wife passed away ten years ago after a lengthy battle against illness. I have two children, but we haven't met in years. How do they feel about you trying to restore your name with the LAPD? About trying to find clues to expose Hugh Speck for the last 25 years? I've never spoken to them about it. They know nothing. They just look at me and go, Okay, boomer. Whatever that <laughs> means. <laughs> Why not? No sense in keeping the problem all to yourself. I'm sure they'd support you. After all, when Hugh Speck had you removed from your post, they had to support you then. Don't you think they have a right to know? Don't you dare tell my... Blah, blah. Don't you tell me... Blah, 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 I can't talk today. Don't, don't you dare try to tell me how to treat my family. No offense, but if I had a dad like you, I don't think I could stand it. Just my two cents, though. You clearly don't understand at all, Mr. Hyde. I didn't leave my family in, in, the dark, in the dark all this time, just for the sake of my own pride. There's more to it than that. Twenty-five years ago, during the Condor case, my name wasn't the only thing lost. The mess that Hugh Speck caused also resulted in someone's death. Whose? The same man you've been looking into. The safecracker. What? So, Mr. Hyde, would you care to tell me how you came to know about that man? Who told you about him? Well... <clears throat> Who told you? Tell me. Uh, Michael McGrath's son. Michael McGrath's son. He told me about a man who crept into the manager's office and... I see. I think it's about time you talk straight with me, Frank. I want you to tell me about the safecracker who was killed here 25 years ago. Tell me everything you know. <clears throat> Come on, Frank, you just told me. You said that this person had gotten involved in the case you were working on. I... I... Aha! Boink. You're saying I a lot. <laughs> Tell me. Did you buy information? No, he Ooh. helped him get in. Oh, what if he... What if he had him go into the safe to try and find some criminating evidence in the safe? 
and got caught and got him killed, which then got this oh, guy fucking fired. No. Did you help get him in? Yes. Yes, I did. So you and the safe cracker knew each other beforehand, then? No, we didn't. Gregory was there thanks to the information he got from a contact I often used. Gregory? Who's Gregory? That's the name of his associates used for him, at least. I seriously doubt that was his real name, but just something he used while working. Gregory was a safecracker who'd never been arrested and was well known in the field. He was also knowledgeable on Condor. I figured I could use a person like that to assist me in my plans. We had an agreement, and I'm the one who got him into the hotel. However, I intended to catch Condor by fair means or foul. That was my plan. But Hugh Speck put an end to all that. How did Hugh Speck put an end to your plan 25 years we ago? We all know when it happened. Just stop saying 25 years ago, please. <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Well, he... Tell me the whole story. He did something beyond words. He tortured him. Let me guess, you spec. What? Told Condor about your plan. Uh, I don't know how we're supposed to know this. Well, didn't... Didn't Kyle's dad work for, like, a criminal organization? Hmm, well... He was probably like a thief, but he, he probably did jobs for them, but not part of their group. Mm. There is such a thing as just, you know, you know, pro bono. Yeah. How about told Condor about your plan? Okay. You spec told Condor about your plan. That's right. There we go. And that was also why Gregory was silenced. That night, while I was waiting for the word from Gregory, that's what it happened to me, too. Frank. What? Enough beating around the bush. Excuse me? I need you to tell me exactly what you were planning to do 25 years ago. All of it. What do you mean? <laughs> exactly what I said! <laughs> I thought I made myself clear from the start. What I need to know is precisely what happened with the safecracker 25 years ago. You know the truth behind the death that occurred the night, and you're not telling- and, and you're gonna tell me! You're not gonna tell me! You win, Mr. Hyde. I'll tell you what you need to know. But on one condition. I'm listening. If you really want to hear the whole truth, you'll have to make me talk. <laughs> Why? What the hell's that supposed to mean? Well, I would have thought an, an ex-detective like yourself would have known. It's time you demonstrated to me exactly how much you want to hear the truth. If you expect to get everything out of me, you're going to have to work for it. If you choose your questions well, I'll talk. I'll tell you everything you want to know. But if you aren't able to ask the right questions, our little chit-chat stops here. You got yourself a deal. Well, fuck. So what kind of agreement did you have? Mr. Hyde, I hardly think that's a fitting question at this point. You clearly know nothing. Huh? Mr. Hyde, I'm sure I told you at the start that you should be choosing a- There's like a specific- Fuck off. Seriously? Just answer the damn question. As I understood it, you wanted to know what happened to the safecracker 25 years ago. You're intent on asking me about other matters instead. Then you s I suggest you leave right away. Really? Come on. Geez, never thought he'd be this hard to please. Now, how am I going to find out about my dad? I should really start thinking before I speak. Fuck What? What you. difference does it make? Just answer- What the fuck is this? Make me talk shit. Come on! Answer the question! <laughs> fuck off. This game's dumb. So essentially- Okay. So essentially what this is suggesting is that we're supposed to- We're supposed to just ask the questions that have to- that have to just flow into the next question that we have next. Yeah. So I feel like the first logical question was it what is, happened? No, is what what was your plan? Because it's what was your plan? And I don't know how I'm gonna see how the conversation goes, but it's like what, what was your plan? What's the agreement? 
And ha what did Hugh spec, or what is it that happened after Hugh spec? Well, what were what are the questions? Because that's no, it's, what was your plan twenty five years ago? What kind of agreement did you have? And what was it that happened to you? All right, so yeah, I guess we start off with what was your plan? Okay. Okay, Frank, let's start with this. What was your plan from 25 years ago to catch Condor? Well, I decided there was only one way to bring Condor to justice. That was to catch them in the act. Skilled as the Condor group was in conducting systematic jewelry thefts, they were also adept in turning their acquisitions into near untraceable cash. But I'd found out from a staff member that Hotel Cape West was being used to sell the stolen wares on, and that the jewels were being kept in a safe in the manager's office. If I could positively ID the jewels being stored there the co that, bleh, that were stolen by Condor, I would have all the proof I needed to drive the final nail into Condor's coffin. So that's why you enlisted <laughs> Gregory's help to crack the safe. You wanted him to make his way into the manager's office and remove the jewels, right? Precisely. The plan was to have him break into the safe, extract the contents, and send me to signal. Then the police would arrive at the office and confiscate what he extracted. Well, that was what he, we planned, at least. What kind of signal had you decided he should send you? We planned to use the window. The last window. The last window. The window? Yes. He was to enter the manager's office, open the safe, and extract the contents. Once he'd got the jewels, he was to go to the window and use his flashlight. This would let me know that things had gone according to plan. The police that had been standing by, the, uh, standing by could then raid the premises. The problem was that something went wrong with the signal we'd agreed on. Gregory just disappeared, so we never went into the building. Ah, oh, there's more fucking questions. Why was... Should we just save state it? Should we just save scum it? <laughs> what went wrong? I feel like the next one would be what went wrong. If you want, you could save state it just to... Yeah, just to be... I don't want to go through this whole fucking conversation again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what went wrong? Okay, next question. What went wrong? Well... You're telling me he never returned the signal you were waiting for, right? No, I believe he sent it, but... But what? You must understand, Mr. Hyde. There are things I cannot discuss beyond this point. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong window. <laughs> I was looking at... <laughs> and why the hell not? Because they concern the promise that connects me to Gregory. The agreement. Indeed, if that promise had been kept as planned, he would have never needed to die. I regret what happened to him. I doubt I'll never outlive re that regret. Mr. Hyde, I think I've said enough. I couldn't possibly discuss this any further. Why? Wait, just keep it, keep going. There's only one person I could imagine telling this whole story to, and that person is a relative of Gregory. There you go. What kind of agreement did you have? What kind of agreement did you have with Gregory? He was intending to leave the world of crime behind him and start afresh. But he, was un he wasn't able to break his ties with his old acquaintances. So I made him a promise. If he lent his talents to assisting me with my investigation, I would make certain incidents from his past would go away. And the police force would ensure that all ties he had with to his past were severed. And did he bite and agree to your proposal? Not at first. He seemed to be somewhat against the idea. In order to gain his trust, I needed to make a different approach. An act of good faith, I gave him something he'd find difficult to refuse. What was it? I handed him the keys to a new car. That's it. That's fucking it? He died for a car. He died for a fucking car. It would serve as a kind of advanced payment. What? What? <laughs> There's no need to act so surprised. It was commonplace in operations like this. That's the sort of thing we did back then for people who assisted us. What the fuck? And what was it that happened to you? 
What, what happened to <laughs> Hang you? on. Wait. <laughs> You're telling me that this fucking deadbeat dad <laughs> caved in for a fucking car. When you... Just to, just to put away all of his pet... Uh, whatever. Alright. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Hyde, <laughs> listen, I'm not happy about this either. Quite <laughs> frankly, it was a clusterfuck. <laughs> I don't see how this has, that has anything to do with what you know about it. Frank, what if I were to bring a memory of Gregory's family here? Would you be willing to tell them everything? Naturally. But how on earth would you? You leave that to me. Oh? Don't go anywhere. I'll be back as soon as I can. Do we have to get, do we have to get a fucking picture of us? Mm. I guess we're going to our room. Or what if we just like walk back in and it's like, D guess what, fucko, it's me. <laughs> just leave and come back. Hey, I'm that family member. Dun, dun, dun! That was pretty good, right? <laughs> nice dramatic suspense. Top of the table is a small package that arrived from mom. There's a car key inside the oh, box in the shit. package. That's the car key. I take the car key. Fucking car key. So it was Frank who gave this key to dad. At least tell me it was a Mercedes. <laughs> a Lamborghini, please. Something nice. Something nice. I got him it a... It was a Hyundai. I got three him years a, old. I got him a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> knock, knock, it's Knuckles. <laughs> it's open. Okay, fuck you too. I don't want to walk over there. I'm drinking coffee. Still having a, war a warm one. A warm one? Popping a, <laughs> popping a warm one with the boys. Sorry to have kept you waiting. So, where's the member of Gregory's family, Mr. Hyde? Right here. Me. What? I've got something you need to see. Here. <laughs> this is... Yeah, this is the same car key you gave to Gregory 25 years ago. It was discovered on the body of a man in a downtown parking lot not long afterwards. This is one of the items my dad left me. What, what did you say? Gregory's real, real name was Chris Hyde. 25 years ago, after deciding to wash his hands of crime, he left the house on his final job. Three days later, he still hadn't returned home to his family. The police were investigating the murder at one point, but they quickly broke it off. The case remains unsolved to this day. Frank, I'm Chris's son. And that's why I have the right to hear what you've got to say. You're gonna tell me all about the promise you made to my father. Uh, fuck. And exactly what happened at the end. You're gonna tell me everything. Now all we're missing is a fucking pistol. He you just 25 years ago, you've gotten my father killed. Now it's time for you to die. <laughs> my name is Kyle Hyde. <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> to get the proof we needed to expose Condor, I made Gregory a promise 25 years ago. From this, his point of view, this job posed a considerable risk. He agreed to take on the job knowing it would be his last for the sake of his family. We made our promise. He looked me di directly, in, directly in the eyes and said, Can I really trust you? I didn't answer, but just nodded. I never intended that nod to be a lie, but... What happened? That night, he broke into the manager's office as we'd planned and got the safe opened. 
and took out the contents. Then, from the darkened room, he shone the signal. But no matter how many times he repeated it, nobody sent him the response he was expecting. Why not? Why didn't you send in the cavalry like planned? Because I wasn't there. Oh, please, tell me you were just... What? That night, while I was at the designated spot, Speck handed me a single note. The message was clear. It said that my wife's condition had worsened and that I should go to the hospital at once. Oh, no. Naturally, I went, leaving Speck to preside over the scene. Oh, shit. Fuck, dude. To sum so to summarize, I fled to see my wife while Gregory was still doing the inside job. Gregory must have thought I was guiltfully waiting in position outside the hotel. After he'd singled me, he simply had to wait for the reinforcements to arrive. But I had already departed to be by my, my be by my beloved side. Speck's plan had been a complete success. Speck's plan? Yes. It was his intention to lure me away from the scene that night. No, sooner had I reached the hospital than it became clear and I hurried back. Speck maintained that he'd been given the note, but not known what the contents were. And he also said that he had nothing, seen nothing like a signal from the manager's office. So he spun a web of lies that had you convinced. He did. He was a member of the force, and I had no reason to disbelieve him. It was only later that I learned the truth behind that night's events. Please, Mr. Hyde, are you able to forgive me? If I'd only known that Speck was working with Condor all those years ago, I would have never have left him in charge of the scene. And maybe your father would still be alive today. And that's everything, is it? Um... <laughs> it is. Uh, on the way back, though, I, <laughs> I, I, went to, I, went to, I got a popsicle. <laughs> on my way to see my wife, I had to go get her a strawberry donut to see if I could make her feel a little bit better. That's kind of sweet. The truth, that's the truth behind the death of the safe cracker 25 years ago. <clears throat> Don't you have anything to say? Now that you ask, I'm not sure I do. Funny as it may sound, I don't blame you for what happened. In fact, all I can think about right now is how he must have felt during those final moments. Of course. Tell me one thing, Mr. Hyde. When did you find out that your father died in these very apartments? I only found out a little while ago. It was written in Michael's diary. What? You mean to say you found his diary? Yeah, I found it all right. You're not gonna like the fact that there's nothing related to Hugh Speck in there, though. Oh, I see. Well, while we're on the subject, you said you had a discussion with Michael's son. Just to put my mind at ease, could you please let me know? Sorry to disappoint you, but he didn't tell me anything that you'd find useful. I see. Nevertheless, I'd l very much like the opportunity to talk to him myself. That's gonna be tough. He left not long after I spoke to him. He left? Are you telling me he lived here, in this building? He sure did. He was in room 306. You mean that man? I had no idea. Don't take it so hard. I'll find you the proof you need to nail Spec. Mr. Hyde. In fact, I intend to expose everything these apartments have been hiding. And once I'm done, the only mystery left will be where I'll get my coffee from now on. All you need to do is keep your nose out and wait for me to get it done. Why you arrogant little? Just trying to keep you out of the line of fire. Leave the dangerous stuff to me. Well, I suppose you've proven yourself useful. I'll back down for now. But please, take this with you. It's a fucking gun. This is... It's the other half of the torn postcard I got from Will. He just kept that. <laughs> I take the postcard piece. This item represents the only clue I found while searching the first floor. Take it with you, it might help. I take it you're still eager to hear what Miss Patrice has to say. Damn right I am. There are plenty of things I have to ask that lady. But she won't be too excited to talk to me, will she? Then leave that part to me. I'm sh I'll make sure she understands you're not in league with the Nile. If all goes according to plan, there's every chance she'll emerge from her room. 
Okay, I'll leave that to you. Good luck, Mr. Hyde. I hope we get one more scene with Tony. Just one last thing, Frank. What is it? What kind of man was my dad? We had a drink together once. I remember thinking to myself at the time that he was a lot tougher than he looked. He never had much to say, but what he did say... Wait, what? Oh. He never had much to say, but what he did say, he said with the utmost poignancy. Poignant, point, potency. But I don't know how to po say it. Poignancy. Poignancy, there you go. <laughs> he told me about this kid wanting to be a baseball star when he grew up. Aw, Kyle. In fact, when he was telling me this, he came across as a run-of-the-mill kind of guy. I see. Okay, I need to make a move. I'm wasting time. I leave Frank's room. Fucking starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I know the truth behind what happened to Dad, that's not everything. I need to know how he died. The postcard that Michael left behind. The Condor Key. The disappearance of the Scarlet Star and proof of Hugh Speck's wrongdoing. There are obviously still secrets that people could get hurt over. Just how much does Mags know about them, though? Nine o'clock. It's almost time. Alright, Mags, it's time to die. <laughs> My father died into your arrogance to prepare to die. <laughs> it was your Hugh Speck and your criminal organization. It was your stupid Hugh Spock. <laughs> Speck. <laughs> Fuck him. Who is it? I hear Mags' voice from inside her room. We need to talk, Mrs. Patrice. Mr. Hyde. I'm on the phone with Mr. Raver at the moment. What do you need to talk to me about? About Michael McGrath and the diary he left behind. I see. Very well. Please, come in. I thought you had no intention of me inviting you into your room anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Patrice, this is going to be hell in my throat. Yes, what is it? I never thought you could do something so underhanded. I could say the same of you, Mr. Hyde. Why? <laughs> Why'd you, you do, do such, such a thing? thing? I thought you'd have realized by now. I'm not working for Niall. And explain to me why you were poking around the fourth floor, and why you took my key. How'd you even know I'd taken it? Because I cannot think of anybody else who would have done so. That's why. You have to admit you've been asking me very probing questions of late. Also, you seem to have taken to roaming about this building instead of going to work. Dylan I sold also... two things, okay? <laughs> Dylan was also kind enough to warn oh, me about fuck you. It. <laughs> fuck you, Dylan! He told me I should be extra vigilant when you're around. Oh, he did, did he? How nice of him. Did you find that amusing? I never thought you'd be so dumb as to trust anything that comes out of his mouth. I... Guess you didn't know, huh? Dylan's been watching you on behalf of his employer, Niall. Excuse me? And not just you, either. He was also watching another tenant whose relatives worked for Condor. A relative of people working for Condor. I had no idea there was someone like that living here. Who is it? Well, if you haven't got any interest in rocking the boat with Condor, it's probably better if you remain in the dark about who they are. Dylan left because... God, fuck, I'm sorry. Whew! Kyle's voice makes me yawn. <laughs> Dylan left without causing any fuss because you were unaware of his true identity. That's a very good point. But, there's still something I don't understand. Yeah, and what might that be? You, Mr. Hyde. I still have no idea about you. Exactly how do you figure in all this? Me? Will I? 25 years ago, a safecracker was killed here in the manager's office. He was my father. I beg your pardon. 
like I told you before, my dad was killed when I was nine years old. 25 years ago, he had to go out on one last job before going straight. Three days later, his body was picked up in a downtown parking lot, and the case remains unsolved. He got caught up in a police investigation to uncover Condor's secret fencing operation at Hotel Cape West, and it was there that he was killed. I only found all this out after you gave everyone the eviction notice. And how exactly did you come to know all this? I got my information from a person connected to Condor, who lives in this building. They told me that my dad came in here to steal the Scarlet Star, but he was killed and the gem simply disappeared. The Scarlet Star... After I'd found that out, I made my decision. I would expose everything about this building's hidden past. So that's the reason you came in here and searched around, I suppose. Right. Why'd you buy a building that was marked by Condor? And then why'd you suddenly decide to sell up? These are things I need answers for. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> Just how much do you know about Condor? I've got no interest in talking about such things. Please don't ask me anymore. No, no, Aha. it's the time for talking. Listen, Mrs. Patrice, you can't just ignore this. I'm gonna get an answer from you. Why are you so ex afraid to explain things to me? Is it because you were Condor's ringleader? Is it because your husband was caught? It was, it was her husband. Is it because your husband was Condor's ringleader? Yes. That's precisely the reason. After he injured his hand, he couldn't play the saxophone anymore. He changed. He got his first job from them of courtesy of a customer who came to the restaurant. After it went well, he began to realize that he was in too deep to turn back. Before too long, he was the ringleader of the criminal organization known as Condor. He eventually roped an old friend, the hotel manager Michael, into his work too. They devised the means of selling the stolen jewelry secretly to avoid detection. Who killed Kathy McGrath 13 years ago? Even if you're not going to talk, you're definitely going to listen. The person who, or who murdered Kathy McGrath was... Probably him. Right? Right? Why was she killed again? I'm trying to remember. So Michael McGrath owned it. Mm -hmm. Kathy was her wife. What was she killed for? It was probably George. I mean, he's the ringleader. Why he would the ringleader, Why would Mags do it? He was the ringleader, but... Yeah, but why would Mags do it? Maybe to protect George's image. Maybe they think George did it, but it was actually her. I don't know. I'm gonna go with George. Something tells me. My vote's her, but go ahead. You got the mouse. It was George Patrice. I'm afraid that's right. Shit. No. <laughs> it was George who killed her. No, it was definitely you. But why did he do it? He told me why. It was payback for Michael double crossing him. Oh. Double crossing crisscross? How did they manage to sell it secretly? How did Michael and George manage to sell the jewelry secretly? George didn't keep the stolen goods himself, but entrusted them to Michael. Michael stored them in the safe inside the manager's office. Once a buyer had been found, George would get in touch with Michael. And cash would be exchanged for the jewelry when the back buyer came to the hotel. Oh, fuck. George would then take receipt of the cash immediately and receive his cut. So the purpose of the parties held at the hotel was to find people to buy the jewelry or to steal jewelry from the... No, it's to find people to buy yeah. it. So the hotel parties were held to find people to buy the jewelry. Exactly. The parties would be held from time to time at the hotel. There, potential buyers would gather and the process would begin in earnest. So I imagine the actual goods were exchanged in one of the guest rooms, right? No. Michael was very clear about that and I would never use the guest rooms. Instead, there was a hidden chamber for this very purpose. That's probably where the key goes. What did Michael do to double-cross George? 
What did Michael do to double-cross George? No sooner had George received Boyd, that the hotel safe was going to be broken into. Then he contacted Michael to let him know. At that time, there was still an item inside that of buy it. Had not been found for. It was the Scarlet Star. <coughs> Michael received his orders and when the intruder arrived, he shot him there in the office. He then stashed the corpse in a hotel chest freezer where it stayed for two days. Then it was taken out and dumped at a different location where it was safe. After the incident was over, Michael told me that the Scarlet Star was gone. According to what he told me, it had already been removed from the safe before he shot the safe cracker. And George believed that? Not exactly. He just led Michael to believe he trusted him. Led him to believe? He didn't want to pressure Michael or he might risk losing the use of the hotel. George could be a cold, calculated man. He didn't exact his revenge on Michael for another 12 years. So the reason he chose to wait 12 years before getting his revenge was because... Michael wanted out of the stolen goods train. Michael had sold the Scarlet Star on. Michael wanted out. Yeah. Michael wanted out of the stolen goods train? Yes, that's right. Michael made the decision to close down the hotel 13 years ago. It was his attempt to sever the bond between himself and Condor. However, George wasn't willing to just sit back and accept this. Also... How do you just end your... <laughs> How do you end your sentence on also? Where is this hidden chamber? Where is the hidden chamber that was used to sell the stolen goods? That's something I'm totally unable to help you with. Even when the building was undergoing renovation, no such room was found. I see. Listen carefully, Mr. Hyde. The key that you took from here, I'm sure it's for that very room. What? The key was among the things George bequeathed to me after his death. Even though I had it all these years, I still don't know when it's been to be used. I think it's in the, uh, maybe use on the elevator, maybe? Oh, yeah! No, there was also a key, like, hole. Yeah. I assume that your main focus now is to discover where that hidden chamber lies, correct? Absolutely. That's, it prob that's probably where Dylan was trying to go, too, since he was the one fixing the place up. Yeah! It kind of just disappeared from the building. I wonder if you're right. Was there another reason for something? Was there another reason for him to dispose of Kathy? Yes. It was because he had grown tired of Kathy's company. Meaning? George and Kathy had been... intimate. An act which had betrayed both of us. Shit. Wow. Aw, oh, the zoom in! I think we've covered just about everything, Mr. Hyde. Not so fast. There's still a few holes left. I don't know if I can discuss everything in one go. It's not as easy as you might think at my age, you know. You're 35. But if... Uh, but if you insist, if you are willing to indulge me, I may be willing to keep talking. What do I need to do? So you'll agree to my toys? <laughs> Guess I don't have much of a choice, do I? But the stakes are, I do what you ask and you tell me every last thing I want to know. Naturally. Okay. Now tell me what I need to do. Bend over. Well, Mr. Hyde, even though I own this building... There's still something I have yet to find. I want you to find it for me. Care to be a bit more specific? Come on, Mr. Hyde. I'm sure you know what I'm referring to. Fine. Have it your way. I suppose I should give you a hint to go with it. Here. Take this. The Scarlet Star. This photo. It's a photo of Hotel Cape West from when it first opened. I take the 1950 so hotel me to photo. Find the hotel. I found it. <laughs> it's right here. You should have this as well. What's this? The bomb. It was one of the things George left behind. I take the small key. Finally, there's this. Oh my God! Come on. <laughs> what else? Mm. 
I found it in George's things together with the key. It appears to be some sort of sketch of the fourth floor. Mm, the elevator? Or maybe... Oh... Okay. If you look, it has six red circles marked on it. What could they mean? There's something written on the corner of the sketch. The far side of the moon. What's that supposed to mean? Well, shit, we still have a lot more to go, it seems. I take the fourth floor sketch. Mr. Hyde, how you use those things is entirely up to you. Yeah, I kind of figured that part out myself. Leave it to me. I'll find you. I'll find what you're after. I'll be back to hear the rest of what you've got to tell me, too. Mr. Hyde. I leave Max's room. The thing so Max was never able to find must be in that hidden chamber. Looks like I'm drawing closer to what I've been looking for. The clues are in the sketch, the photo, and the key. Now that I think about it, this isn't the only photo of the hotel I have. Maybe I should compare them side by side. Whoa. Oh. There's a window. New window. Or an old window that's now not there. That's it. I've got it. There's a window that's missing from the newer photo. I'm positive the hidden chamber is between the elevator and room 405. But how the hell am I going to get to it? There have to be more clues up on the fourth floor. And we're going to solve the mystery of the fourth floor next time. Guys, if you like the video, like it, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And hit that bell if you want to see the next episode of Last Window, maybe actually the finale. Uh, check up that iCard. Bam! Uh, we got Doki Doki Literature Club, Hotel Dusk, uh, Mario's Time Machine, and oh, yeah. others. Uh, question of the day. Mm. What are you exploring right now? <laughs> are you exploring? What are you exploring about? Are you exploring yourself? Are you exploring yourself? No. Oh no, my god. No, how's it? Here's a real question. Uh, any Nancy Drew fans, tell me what your favorite Nancy Drew game is. Put um, that shit in the comments. Bolo. On bottles. I'm mooring. See you next time. Continue.